Hello everyone and welcome back. This is going to be another C++ tutorial for absolute beginners. I'd just like to start off really quick by reminding you that of my forum that I host. Uh, the link can be found right on my channel. It's onestopprogramming.com, which redirects to bcanswers.former.com. And here, you, uh, I'd really love for people to start posting and developing a community so we can really develop a programming community with a wealth, wealth of knowledge it will be a really great resources to a lot of beginner programmers. So if as you learn things, as you have questions, if you could post your uh, questions on the forum or in the comments, I'll, they'll, I'll answer them in both places, but just in the back of your minds, keep in mind that I'd really love to develop this forum. Alright, so we're going to get right into the code now. Now if you remember at the end of my last video, I challenged everyone to improve our calculator in at least two ways. So I'm just going to demo the first and probably the most obvious uh, problem with our calculator. So it works fine as long as you so select a number 1, 2, 3, or 4. If I hit negative 423, 432 rather, it says you're dividing. I thought division only worked with number 4. That's odd. Now it turns out the way our code is written that it evaluates if choices 1 add, choices 2 subtract, if choices 3 multiply, else divide. So if our choice isn't 1, 2, or 3, it's going to divide. Now there's a few ways to fix this, but I'm just going to add some really simple error checking. And we're going to go if choice equal equals 4. Then we're going to do our division. And we're going to add another else. Else, opening brace, closing brace, then our code. I'm going to see out, start a new line. You must select a number between 1 and 4. And we'll end another line after that. So now, if I choose anything other than 1, 2, 3, or 4, we're going to go into an else that is just going to simply print. You have to pick between 1, 2, and 1, and 4, and then the program should just end. So I'm going to pick negative 5, and we get a nice little error message. You must select a number between 1 and 4. It looks nice, and we're going to hit any key to continue, and that's it. So nice error checking there. But there's also another problem with our division function. If we run it again, we choose 4, uh, 52.1 divided by 0 is not one point infinity. It should be undefined. So we're going to add that function to our calculator right now. So before we call this C out, which prints the answer to the division function right here, we're going to just do an, evalu an if evaluation of number 2. So we're going to say if number 2 equals 0, get our braces all set up. We're just going to say C out answer is undefined. And we're going to go on to a new line. Whoops. Alright, so now We add our else statement. And then our code should work fine. Now, something that I, the mistake I almost just made was I forgot to put the else in there. And what would happen in that case is if we divided by 0, this evaluation would be true, and it would print the answer as undefined. But then it would also print this, 
which would be our answer is one point infinity crap. So potentially a good way to think of if statements in general is an if statement contains code that may or may not be run. So you could have a 5,000 line code and only four lines got run if everything was encased in an if statement. Now typically a program pretty much runs off of if statements. Every All input is at some point evaluated through an if statement in some way, shape, or form. It's just the, pretty much the primary way, that you, it's the only way really, that a program can make decisions. So how they're set up, what code can be excluded, what code cannot be excluded, is very important. So in general, if I said, if this, do this, but then left this this outside of the if statement, not in an else, I'd be saying, if this condition exists, I want the program to do this. But no matter what, I always want it to do what's outside an if statement. So just a, a quick summary of, of how if statements are can be thought of. So now we run our program. If we ans answer 4, and then 5 divided by 0, answer is undefined. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we've created a calculator with basic error checking. So I'm only going to do one more thing in this video to keep it on the shorter side, and that is to dive right back into functions. Now, what if you wanted to have your functions defined or implemented after the main function? So you have your functions aren't all one line like ours, but they're 50, 40, 60 line functions that are making your program look like garbage up at the top. You're like, I just want to go to the main function. It should be at the top of the program. Well, there's actually a very easy way to do that, and that is declaring and implementing the functions in different places. Uh, if you remember, I kind of alluded to that when I first talked about functions. So to do that is really, really simple. We're just going to copy this first line of the addition function and we're going to put a semicolon after it. And we're just going to repeat that step for all of our functions that we want to declare. So this is the declaration of the functions up here. So just grab our division function. So right now what we're telling the compiler when they run when it runs this line is we've created or there will be an addition function implemented later in the code with these parameters at float num1 and float num2. And then the semicolon says, all right, that's it, move on to the next line. And then we do the same thing with our subtraction, multiplication, and division. So now if we take all of our, the implementation of all of our functions, and we move it after our main function, after this last closing brace down here, we have now created functions where the implementation and declaration are in different places. Also, the declaration, the implementation of the function rather, is after the main function, not before. So, to run through step by step, it's the compiler saying, "Okay, addition function, it exists. I'll expect it later. Subtraction function, looking for it later. Multiplication function and division function, they both exist." They have these parameters, and I expect to see them later. So then we go down here, and we get to our addition function. And it says, I want to use the addition function. And the compiler goes, OK, the addition function was defined or declared up here. It must be somewhere else. Hang on, let me take a second and find it. It will compile the rest of the code and realize that the addition function is down here. So instead of just erroring out up here and saying the addition function doesn't exist, the compiler knows it exists and it will find it and then run the code. So if we run it now, whoops, compile and run, it works perfectly. So if we do adding, 5 plus 5 is 10. So th this separation of the declaration and implementation of the of functions will come in very handily when we start to move our programs across multiple files. 
which I know in programming for me was a really big step when I could start moving things away from main.cpp. Uh, that won't be coming in the next video or the next video after that, but you can count on that you will soon be able to do that. So I'm just going to wrap it up there. In the next video, we are going to cover the nitty-gritty of if statements and more operators, more logical operators you can do with them. So good luck. Like I said, hopefully you can go onto the forum, ask some questions, uh, and start becoming part of the community. So thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the video.